The true power of optical flares lies in the customizable core objects. And those are the individual elements that make up our lens flares. Now, if we take a look at this lens flare here, you can see there's a lot going on. There's a sun in the background and it looks really good. And you know why it looks really good is because this is actually a picture of a real lens flare. Now, I've recreated it using some of the elements from optical flares. So if we shut it off, we can see a similar lens flare, but this one can be controlled with an optical flares position. Now, it has a lot of the same properties, a lot of the small details and offset, and it was all created procedurally using optical flares. In fact, now if we just take a quick look, you can see there's a ring, there's a caustic element, there's little spot irises, there's orbs, and some shimmer. So using all of the core elements, you're able to recreate realistic lens flares and also realize your own imaginative lens flares as well. So we'll hit OK. Let's take a look at a few other examples. So here we have this golden anamorphic flare and you can see it's more inspired, but you have all these unique elements and anamorphic properties. If we just look at some of these other lens flares, these were all created with optical flares. And we have this Sun Digital, which has all those unique elements and the spots. We've got this blue sort of Michael Bay style lens flare. We've also got this spotlight lens flare that was created using uh, a few various effects. And uh, there's really unlimited possibilities, especially when you have the position and translation controls to be able to move elements in and around the frame. So here's the sun that's based on this picture that looks almost identical. Now let's go and take a closer look at some of the objects in optical flares. So we'll go to the options here and I'll just go ahead and clear the preset there and we'll come over to the lens objects and here we have our 12 objects but we also have custom objects and a custom object is essentially a core object that's been modified. So if I add a glow and a multi iris and maybe a streak, these are the core elements and then we could go through and change the settings. But I can also go to the custom objects and add a few that are already prepared. So this one is kind of an interesting object, maybe a anamorphic spot and an anamorphic stripe, maybe a sparkle. Um, kind of there to show you what the core objects are capable of creating. Now, while we have this up here, I want to show you the sparkle object. I think it's one of the coolest objects um, in optical flares because it really allows you to do some interesting things. So I'll just make some space here. Now, we have the common settings. And that's where we control the brightness and the scale and the rotation. And we can also come down and we play with the colorization. And then we have animation controls for some of the core objects. And then we have the sparkle controls. So we can control the complexity. We can make it, you know, really simple or really complicated. We can change the length of the objects. We can change the spread amount. So if we turn the spread random down, it starts turning more into a circle object. And then maybe turn the thickness up, the complexity back up, you know, any of these settings can really give you some unique looks. And not only that, but we can play with the colorize. We can make it more gradients. We can uh, just use a single color. A lot of possibilities. Now, let's go through and take a look at some of the other key objects. And I'll go and clear it. Come over here. Go to the basic objects. We'll add our glow. Now, the multi iris is a really cool object too. So I'll scale it up. I'll brighten it up. And if we take a look at some of the settings, we have the spread, which allows you to spread the objects. You have a randomization so that they don't move the same speed. Move that down. You can turn up the number of objects. You have a scale and brightness randomization. And you can also change the random seed just to get something completely different. Now, we'll keep going through. The object shape is one of the key parts of optical flares for any of the iris elements. This is where you can change it from a polygon to a circle or use a texture image of a real iris element. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a few less objects here. I'll turn up the scale and the brightness just so that we can see what's happening. Now, come down here to the object shape. We're going to change it to a polygon. 
Now the polygon has a lot of settings. You have the sides, so you can make it, you know, a three-sided, four-sided, as many sides as you want. You can give it some softness. You can also turn up the roundness of the polygon so that it looks a little bit more organic. You can even turn it in to create somewhat of a star effect. We have this thing called blade notching. So if I scale this up, turn up the blade notching, you can see it kind of gives it an iris look where you have the iris blades overlapping. So that's just a cool feature just to add a little bit of subtle realism. We also have an outline intensity. So if we turn that up, it kind of creates a little bit of a border around the iris. And if you've seen any of the real iris elements, they sort of have that property, which uh, just kind of gives a, a little bit of uniqueness. Now, another feature we have is the circular completion. But we'll take a look at that with another object, perhaps. So I'll scale that down, and you know we'll just go from there. Now, the next object we'll take a look at is the streak. Now, seems pretty straightforward. It's just a streak. You know, you've got control over the position, scale, all those common properties. But the streak actually has some cool settings. So what if you want to create a star? Well, you replicate the streak. So if we turn up the replication copies to two, now we've got somewhat of a star. And then we can go up to the common properties, maybe rotate it, and uh, you know, we're uh, well on our way. Now, it can also do a few other cool things. So let's set it to an odd number, like three. So it's created a similar star. We can, you know, scale it down and, you know, have a cool little object. And there's even some randomization to kind of give it uh, a little bit less uniform look. But that is the streak element. We'll go ahead, uh, you know, we'll leave it there. We'll just turn it down a little bit so we can see some of this other stuff. So we'll come back over here. We have the shimmer and the glint. And these two uh, objects are similar. The shimmer is more thicker and the glint is more like thin lines. So you have lines that shoot out, and then you have more like light that shoots out. So you might use the glint for something, uh, let's say we'll turn the thickness down, and it creates kind of a sharp sparkle, whereas the shimmer creates more like these uh, god ray um, you know, type of an effect. So I like to mix them together just to add uh, various detail but let's just take a look at some of the uh, various settings of, say, the glint uh, for right now. So I'll scale it up so we can see it. So we have the complexity. So that's how many, you know, detailed lines. You can control the length, the random length, so that they're not all exactly the same. You have the thickness and uh, spacing random. So if we turn that up, you can start getting, uh, you know, some shimmery effects. And then we have the circular completion, which uh, I guess we could take a look at right now. So right now it's set to 360. So let's change the lens flare you know, to a golden lens flare here. And I want to turn the completion down. So we'll just start moving it down. And so now we've basically limited the area of that object to 83 degrees. And we can also play with the feathering. So if I were to hide our streak you can kind of see exactly what that's doing. Now, without the feathering, it would be a little too sharp, so we can have a little bit of feathering, maybe turn it into just a little sparkle off the bottom of the element, and all of the objects that would need it have this circular completion. It's really a powerful feature. And not only that, but you can control the auto-rotation. So you can make it rotate towards the center so that the light always looks at the center and it almost sparkles as it moves around as well. Okay, moving on, we have a spike ball, which is just sort of a random burst of light, and we have uh, control over a lot of the similar type properties, the thickness and uh, you know the complexity. And this is a little bit more of a different look than the other two elements, and sometimes you just want to have kind of a random blast of light. We uh, checked out the sparkle. We've got the ring which is uh, pretty cool and it's a common thing that uh, you'll see and you can control circular completion, the thickness and uh, we can scale it up and change the feathering on the inside and the outside and you can also change the color from spectrum to just a single color as well. So uh, we'll close that out. Moving on, we have uh, the hoop which is a cool element and the hoop has a lot of controls. 
You can make it continuous or you can make it liney. Um, you can turn up the detail there. So you can kind of see uh, the different looks that you can create. Again, you can change the color and the completion. So if we turn down the completion, we can just make it an object that shows up away from the light source. So kind of like an eclipse effect. Um, but with that on, you know, maybe back to continuous and maybe we'll make it uh, a blue color. And we can really do a lot of things with the hoop. And by default, it's set to anamorphic, but we can set that to one to have sort of a perfect circle as well. Now, moving on, we have our lens orbs, which simulates something that's out of focus on your lens and has a uh, illumination radius and uh, you can control the size and uh, create random seeds. You can even duplicate it, give it a random seed, scale the objects down really, really small, maybe turn up the number of objects, and almost create like a dirty lens effect. So I'd probably uh, tweak the settings there, but that's the idea. Now, moving on to the last object, we have the procedural caustic element. And this is just a cool element to uh, recreate the look of, uh, of a light reflection. This is a basic uh, introduction to the core objects, but there's really a lot of features inside of each of the objects that will give you the control you need to recreate any of the shapes and objects that you would see in a real lens flare. And if you can't, just use a texture because you can load it up uh, just as easy. So those are the 12 core objects of optical flares.